Today we've got a showdown between the Sigma 100 to 400 DGDNOS and the Sony 100 to 400 G Master. And by showdown, I mean a full in-depth comparison between the two. And by full in-depth comparison, I mean figuring out which one is going to be better for you. Let's get started. You heard right guys, we are comparing these two lenses for you today, the Sigma 100 to 400 DGDN OS for Sony E mount and the 100 to 400 Sony G Master. And we're gonna break it down everything that matters between these two lenses to hopefully help you choose which one's gonna be better for you. Here's some specs to get you going. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, my name's Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you do enjoy this video and it helps you out, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. But with that out of the way, let's dive in and check out these two lenses in detail, starting with the size. Okay, so diving into size, I will say that they're both a great size and weight. The G Master at about 10 and 3 quarter inches long with the lens hood installed, and the Sigma only about a half inch less. Fully extended, you can add about 3 inches to both lenses, and without the lens hood, the G Master measures 8 inches and the Sigma just a quarter inch less again. As far as weight's concerned, the G Master does weigh just over half a pound more, but really there's not that much difference, they're both great. There's not a huge difference in the width of these lenses, but do note that the Sigma has 67 millimeter filter threads compared to the Sony 77. All in all, comparing the size of these two, they're very comparable and honestly really hard to notice a difference if you had them both in your hand. So in this regard, they both win. Next, we're diving into the build and features of these two lenses, and they do have a lot of similarities, but also some major differences. The Sigma 100 to 400 is the contemporary model, and because of that, you're not going to get a lot of bells and whistles with it. In fact, all you're really going to get is the lens and a lens hood. The Sony, however, comes with a nice case. It also comes with a video and filter friendly lens hood, as well as a tripod collar. The Sigma does have a tripod collar available, but it does come at an additional cost. And this is something I'd recommend because on a tripod, it can be a little bit awkward. The Sigma has a zoom lock switch, an automatic manual focus switch, a zoom limiting switch, a single autofocus hold button, and a mode selector switch for your image stabilization. In comparison, the Sony has three customizable focus hold buttons, which are handy, as well as the same typical buttons and switches, but it doesn't have a zoom lock switch. Instead, it relies on a customizable dial to really fine tune your resistance when it comes to zooming. On the front of both, you'll find their own proprietary coatings to help with ghosting and flare reduction. And on the back, they both have a confident metal mount with a little rubber gasket for weather sealing. So comparing the overall build and features between these two isn't really that fair because of the price, of course. And the Sigma really does a decent job for being a contemporary lens. The G Master, of course, is just a step above. It's made with better quality materials, and so it feels and performs as such. Although the Sigma does have a decent build, the G Master is just on that next level and wins the build category. Okay, so now for the fun part, performance. How do these two perform? First, let's have a look at the aperture range and physical limitations of these lenses. The Sigma has a maximum aperture of f5, where the G Master comes in a third of a stop faster at f4.5. On both lenses, it's not far into the zoom range at 115 millimeters, where they lose a third of a stop of light, bringing the Sigma to f5.6 and the G Master to f5. The G Master reaches its final stop at about 160 millimeters f5.6, and it's not till 235 millimeters that the Sigma reaches f6.3. This means that the G Master is going to be a third of a stop faster on the wide end, as well as the telephoto side of things. This of course equates the G Master to let more light in, meaning lower ISOs, faster shutter speeds, and better image quality. Here's a quick look at the focal range that you can expect with both of these lenses. And remember that you can always use crop mode to get in and get some extra reach. Also note that there are 1.4 and 2 times teleconverters available for the Sony, but unfortunately at this point, Sigma's teleconverter offerings are not currently available for the E-mount. The 100-400 is one of my favorite lenses of all time, just because of its overall versatility. It's good at pretty much everything you point it at. 
from wildlife to landscapes, and even getting away with some portraits. And here's some examples from the Sigma for you to have a look at. And it's worth noting that the minimum focus distance of these two lenses is one of the main standout differences for me. The Sigma has a variable minimum focus distance where the Sony's is fixed and quite a bit closer. This lets you really get up close and personal, making the Sony for me just that much more versatile. Optically, the Sigma actually bats out of its league and is quite sharp. However, there is one important aspect where it just doesn't compete. That aspect, unfortunately, is autofocus capability, accuracy, reliability, and speed. The Sony 100-400G Master is hands down the best autofocus lens I've ever used. Remember that it was made with and for the A9, and it's really hard to compete in that aspect. Unless you're shooting fast moving subjects, I found that the Sigma for the most part was more than adequate in capturing what I pointed at. Just keep this limitation in mind depending on your needs, and here's a few examples of that. Now let's have a look at the bokeh differences between these two lenses. They both have 9 aperture blades each, but of course the G Master does have the advantage when it comes to aperture speed. So for me, the G Master is going to have the advantage just a bit, but honestly, we're splitting hairs here. They can both produce some absolutely beautiful blurred backgrounds. Here at 100 millimeters, we can see that the advantage just by a little bit might go to the G Master, and this is wide open, so once again, the G Master does have a tiny one-third stop advantage. But let me know what you think down in the comments. And of course, for an in-depth review of either of these two lenses, check out my full in-depth review on each. Here at 400 millimeters, I did have to move the Sigma back just a little bit because of its minimum focus distance, but as you can see, they both do a great job in the bokeh, with for me, the advantage going just a little bit to the G Master. In terms of sharpness as a whole, I will tell you that in my experience, the G Master is definitely the sharper lens, but honestly, not by much. When it comes to the Sigma and stationary objects, it does a fantastic job optically. But once again, for a more in-depth look at sharpness, check out my full in-depth review on both of these lenses. And finally, we stopped down to f8 here with both lenses just to have a look at the bokeh quality. And once again, it's pretty darn close. They both do a fantastic job. And like I said, I think we're splitting hairs. Next, we'll have a look at the image stabilization at work. And on the 100 to 400 G Master, it works extraordinarily well. A beautiful, smooth experience and a necessary feature if you ask me, especially out at 400 millimeters like you see here. Here's the Sigma in action, and although a very welcomed feature, it doesn't perform quite as good as the G Master. And again, for the price it's to be expected, but it's definitely better than nothing. Let's play a quick little game here. I'm going to show you some examples of some photos that I've taken with both lenses, and you tell me which one is taken from which lens. Now when it comes to performance, I bet you it's going to be pretty difficult to spot the differences between these two lenses in these photos. And that just goes to show you just how good the Sigma really is. Aside from budget, probably the most important thing to consider when choosing one of these two lenses is your shooting style. Do you need the utmost speed and reliability when it comes to autofocus? Does ultimate versatility and minimum focus distance matter to you? Is there enough here between the two to justify the big difference when it comes to price, which we'll talk about next. So let me know how many you guessed right down in the comments, and also if you were surprised by the results. In the right hands, almost any lens can produce incredible results. Of course, it's not only about the gear, but it sure does help in a lot of situations. Overall for performance, the Sigma is quite good for what it is, but obviously the G Master is the clear winner here. So let's talk about value. And I'm so happy that we finally have some third party options in this vocal range. Obviously the Sony G Master comes at an incredible premium of 2,500 US dollars. And of course you always get what you pay for, but in this case, the around $930 alternative is pretty darn good. I have to say that if I was doing it all over again and I was on a tight budget, well, you can see where I'm going here. The Sigma is an outstanding value lens with a seven year warranty compared to the Sony's one. 
Do keep in mind that it does not include a case or a tripod collar, so those will be an additional cost. However, I still think this thing is incredible for value and definitely wins the category. So as a whole, looking at these two lenses, who would I really recommend them to? Well, you probably have a pretty good idea now. For the Sigma, I'm gonna say anybody on a budget, anybody that's just getting in a little bit more serious into photography, looking for a still wildlife and sports photography camera that isn't overly concerned with hugely fast moving subjects like birds in flight, for example. The Sony obviously is the best of the best. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's gonna be able to keep up with pretty much whatever you throw at it. It's a lot more expensive, it's better built, and you're gonna pay for it. So if budget's a factor, easy one, hit up the Sigma and definitely don't look back. If budget's not really a concern for you, well, the Sony is probably one of my favorite lenses of all time and you really can't go wrong. So there you go, it's an easy choice when it comes to budget. If the absolute best performance is of paramount concern to you, well, you know which one I'm leaning towards. But the Sigma is absolutely no slouch, a fantastic value lens. It's just gonna come down to your needs and what's best for you. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Drop all your questions and your comments down below. If you want to pick up either of these lenses, I'll drop affiliate links down there as well for you. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.